if you can get really in touch with why you do what you do and why you're so connected to it and why you're so passionate about helping your people, then it's easier to tell all the other stories. Agent Power Huddle is a daily jumpstart, giving you all the tools you need to create an amazing real estate career. Led by top experts in the field, you'll learn how to sell more houses in less time while creating the life you want. Welcome to the Agent Power Huddle. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. I don't know about you, but it is a beautiful, sunny Northwest day. God, I love the sun so much. I think I need to be in California because I want sun all the time. But then I, I say that and then I go there and it's brown. And so I'm like, well, I'll come back to Seattle, but it's green. Anywho, that's my little, my little thing. Hey, is anyone on here uh, near Bend, Oregon? No? Okay. I'm curious because I'm, I'm headed to Bend next weekend. So I'm like, like, who can I stop and meet in person besides Carol? That's Carol. I'm going to stop with Carol. See Carol on the way down. Okay. Well, okay. So today we are here at storytelling part two. So who was on the call last week or who watched the replay? Love it. Love it. Love it. I would love to know kind of like, uh, we'll take a couple seconds here. If you were on the replay or you were on the call, um, I'd love to know, like, did you actually take something that we talked about last week and actually start implementing it? a big no nobody nobody did okay cool thank you pat for shaking your head and being super honest <laughs> she's like nope we didn't okay so here's the deal you guys i can teach this till i'm blue in the face all day every day but it really doesn't matter what i say unless you actually do it so i'm going to encourage you to actually do it so um i have uh my entire team on the call today so i need one of you to take ownership of this task right here the check the the uh the questions that we that brandon did i need those to get into the facebook group uh because last week's i are not in there yet so if you can add last week's in there um and then if you can add this week's in there as well so um brandon is giving me a thumbs up so i'm thinking that he's doing that so <laughs> brandon's gonna add in all of the questions that we talked about last week to write your personal story and this week we're gonna uh he's gonna add in the ones about the customer story um, and then the replay from last week, actually, I just got it. So uh, if you if you if you were proactive and actually saw it on YouTube before I got it, awesome. But we are going to get that replay from last week uploaded. I think I just got it yesterday. So I encourage you to watch the uh, storytelling from part one all the way to the end because you guys, this story, learning how to actually tell a story has changed the entire trajectory of my business. It has changed my content. It has changed the way I go about doing pretty much everything because the reality is when you learn how to tell a story, you don't have to think about the platform that you're telling the story on. Right there, like last week, we talked about how there are nine different platforms. Nine, I think more. I, mean, I don't know. Like all these like social media, there's all nine different platforms. I personally am on five consistently, one occasionally. Okay, if I had to think about creating plat creating content for Facebook, and creating content for LinkedIn, and creating content for Instagram, and creating content for you, if I had to think about creating content for every single one of those channels, I am never going to get, I'm never going to sell houses. I'm never going to make any money. I'm just going to be creating content all the time, right? And it's really overwhelming. So when you learn how to come about creating content as like telling stories, I'm going to tell you, it's going to change the way that you do everything. So I hope that that is uh, helpful and you we get to understand a little bit, a little bit more about why I'm so passionate about this particular piece of the puzzle. Okay. So this week, uh, last week, we talked about the personal story. This week, we're going to talk about the customer story. And the customer story is a really, really important story. Why do we think the customer story is important? Throw it in the chat or come off, come off me. I'd love to hear a perception on why a customer story is important. Credibility. Who, who said that? Who said what? Suma. Suma. Hi, Suma. Yeah. Hi. Credibility. Yes, exactly. Anyone else? It's about also because other clients might relate to their story. Yep. Yep. Because when you're telling it, you're telling it about them. So last week, it was all about you, about me. Last week was all about me, right? It's all about you. And the reason why it needs to be all about you is because when you're in a market where there is, when real estate agents are a dime a dozen and people are dropping like flies left and right, the way that you're going to be able to make it through the shift, the way you're going to be able to build a long-term business is going to be your yourself. 
you, your unique value proposition, your unique experiences. So the personal story is the most important story, which is why we started with that. Because when you can get really in touch with your personal story, like I did last week, right? If you can get really in touch with why you do what you do and why you're so connected to it and why you're so passionate about helping your people, then it makes it easier, it's easier to tell all the other stories. Okay, so we're going to go into the customer story. Um, and I, I'm not going to do the presentation. It's just not going to work. So we'll do it this way. Y'all can see my notes. Okay, so um, customer story here. So well, essentially, here's the quick definition of a customer story. You guys just told it to me, but it's about them. It's the, it's what... Um, it's what a customer feels about your brand. It highlights their journey, their challenges, their outcomes. It allows other people, like Mariella said, it allows other people to see insights and testimonials that people who have actually worked with you have experienced. You know, it allows it allows your people who already have no like and trust you, who've already used your services, who've already bought into your brand, it allows them to help you create more customers. It allows them to be able to connect with other people just like them. Okay. Um, there are a few elements of a story that I want to consider here. Um, and obviously, <laughs> who is the customer? What is their background? What is their role? Who is your client avatar? Again, like, this is where you really have to go deep. Like when we we'll get through those five elements of a customer story, uh, but you need to go deep on each of these questions. Like when you go to who is the customer, right? It's not just about, you know, it, it is important. You got to understand that they drink coffee or tea, like those kind of things, right? But you really need to understand what is what drives them. What is their background? Why are they doing what they're doing? Why are they going to work with you? What is the emotional connection? What is it? What is the emotional connection to what you do? What is the emotional connection to you, your experience, your services, your packages? Who is your customer? Carol, Carol, I don't see you on camera right now, but um, I'll flip to you. You are here. I, okay. So Carol is really, really clear about who her customer is. I know Carol has done this work. Carol, can you, can I put you on the spot for a second? Who, because y'all, I, I, I mean, I can talk about my, my customer all day, every day. Carol's like, maybe if I can get myself off mute. <laughs> maybe. I can. There she is. Carol, who is your customer? So blue to white collar uh, individuals who are in a committed relationship, you know, not necessarily married, but could be early marriage, um, no kids or young children and have not purchased their first home or are looking to move up to their second home. Very, 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 very clear. Is anyone else on this call that clear about your, who your customer is? Exactly who your customer is. I am. I'm super clear. I know exactly who my customer is. Mine is very similar to uh, mine is similar, very similar to Carol's. She and I talked about this for a long time. <laughs> we had to stop. We had to stop with the with. We had to stop for a minute because I was like, okay, we're gonna go super deep. But you have to know who exactly is your customer, and the reason why is because when you are telling a story or they are telling their story, right? You want to attract more people like them. Right. So if you can be able to uh, be able to talk to that exact person through the power of stories, which I'll show you here in a second. You're going to be able to find a lot more of them. And we all want to work with people we want to work with. I don't like to work with people I don't like to work with. Right. Like I'm not, not the only one. OK, the second thing is like what problem or need. So Carol just told us what they're what who they are. But Carol, what is their problem? What's the problem or the need that they have? What are they trying to achieve or solve? Just stay off mute at this point. <laughs> yeah, you know, they are, they just don't know how to go about purchasing a home um, and or how to sell their new, their, their home that they're in. I mean, they're living their lives, right? They've got um, kids and life that they have to organize and boxes and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, mine, mine are busy professionals. They are really high level in their career and they're just way too busy to think about the fact that they really need to move because at this point they traveled the world so much. They have so many knickknacks. They have an entire room in their house that is dedicated to the knickknacks and the, and the items that they picked up on their travels. And now they need more space because they literally can't live there anymore, but they don't have the time. 
They don't have the time. So they need, they need to be able to do this efficiently, seamlessly, and, and with no questions. They just need to get it done. That's a problem and that's a need, right? So you need to go this going on going on your customer, you need to go as deep as all of this. Because the reality is now Carol can talk to her customer and I know what my customer wants. So if you guys are watching any of my content, you're going to start seeing that you'll start seeing this now that you're hearing kind of like who I know, who my customer is, you'll start to see that in my content. The third thing is what solution did the customer choose? So what did they choose? How, why did they choose to work with you? People choose to work with me because I have a five-step process that makes it super seamless, super seamless to sell your current house and buy a new one at the same time. We all know how to help someone buy and sell a house at the same time, but do you know how to package it up into where it's a simple five-step process? That's what you need to do. You need to find and get it as, as, as seamless as possible because what's going to happen is then every time your customer is telling a story, they're going to talk about, oh my God. Linnea and her team and the dream methods, five-step process, blah, 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 blah. And you'll start to see it in some of these stories I'm going to share with you in a minute. You also want to understand is like, where are they at in their journey? Like, when did you, you know, wh what are their key stages? Like the, the discovery phase, right? So my, my first step of my dream method is the discovery phase. That's the very, very, very beginning of the journey. They're literally discovering if this is something they want to do. Okay. The second stage, the second stage for my dream method is the refined stage. We're refining, we're refining it. So they've discovered it. Okay, they've made the decision, but now we've really got to refine it and button it up for them. All right. So what are the key stages and what are the milestones in your customer's journey? And how did that actually interact with what you do in your brand? And then the last thing you really want to consider when you're coming to developing a customer story and developing your who your actual customer is is think about what specific outcomes or benefits did they experience? How did it improve their situation or meet their expectations? Like, what are these specifics? So, you know, when we talk about, we talk about, I'm going to come off share for a second. We talk about things like setting goals, right? And the very first thing you want to understand when you set a goal is what? What's a SMART goal? What's the very first letter stand for in SMART goals? Specific. 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 I'm listening to a book right now called Abundance Now. Um, I can share the link for you guys if you want. Um, but one thing she says in there is like, you need to be very, very clear. Like when it comes to like thinking about goals, like let's think about income goals. Is your income in the form of mutual funds, stocks and bonds, cash? I never thought about that before. I was like, holy cow. That is how specific you need to go. So same with your customer. How, what is, what is, you need to be as specific as possible about what they actually experienced and what you want them to experience. Make sense? Um, okay. So let us head back here real quick. Um, I want to give you a couple of examples of a customer story. I'm going to share. I actually have three that I want to share. I was trying to like do a Canva presentation myself, create it, but y'all should know I am not a Canva person. I, I hate it. I don't like it. I have other people who love it, who love to do this stuff for me. And I didn't ask them in time. So we're going to be a little, a little scrappy here. Okay. So I'm going to show you one version of a customer story. And then I want to show you two more versions of a customer story, because I want you to see kind of like how a customer story is told. And I want you to be able to see how, like, you know, how, how each of these elements that we're talking about right here are identified in the story. Okay. Um. Let me see. Oh, Katrina, of course you're reading that book now. I feel like we're always on the same the same page. Okay, let me share a sound with you. Abundance Now. It's a great book. I was like, I have, was like going through my Audible library. I'm like, what do I have in here? Because I didn't want to spend any more credits. I'm like, I just want to use what I've already spent. And I was like, it's been in there for like a year. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to listen to it. And I'm like, oh, huh, it's a good one. It's a good one. Okay, so let's pay attention to one customer story here. I'm actually, um, do we have the caption on here? Oh, we do. It's right here. Okay. I'm going to just delete this real quick. See, I know a little bit about Canva that I can do this. All right. So let's go here real quick. And I want you to watch the video. And then we're going to go over this actual story piece. Uh-oh. Didn't work. Just remember, it always looks worse. And before it looks better. Customer story. 
Does anyone have any 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 idea why that's a customer story? Yeah, I'm gonna just tell you. Okay, I'll tell you. I'll just tell you. I'll tell you. So here's the story behind that video. Okay, you you watch the video, you say, oh, before and after, right? It's cool. But when you actually read the story, we're identifying who my customer is. They love their house for 43 years, but by the time they wanted to sell, they were exhausted and they want to sell as is. How many of you can already relate to this in your job? You have people all the time who want to sell as is. All of us, we all do. I don't want to do any more work. I want to sell it as is. Here's what happens. Unfortunately, they were getting offers from investors that didn't align with their vision for the house. So we had to react and allow the the home to be seen in the light that they saw it. Okay. So now I'm placing the scene. Here's what, here's what, here's their problem, right? Here's what they wanted. Here's their problem. Here's what we did. Here's a solution we did. We took it off the market. We did some repairs. We gave the home a refresh. Then we brought in some staging to allow a buyer to see the Freeman's vision. That very first weekend back on the market, we had over a hundred people view the house and the perfect buyer found it. I left out the fact that we had about 15 offers on this house, but the perfect buyer found the house. Within four days, we had the house under contract with several offers on the table. Their dream became a reality and they were finally able to start a new chapter in their story, netting over $200,000 more than they were receiving the first time around. Okay, so here's the result. And then here's the solution that they chose. This is the power of the dream method and understanding all of your options and having a team that's able to react and put in the work to make your vision a reality. Okay, this is a way better story Do you agree? Then just sold. I sincerely like just sold the just sold. I'm like, stop with the just sold. It's cool that you sold a house. Great. That's your job. You should sell a house. Okay. That's what you should be doing or else you should not be in this business. Okay. But you should, but if you want to actually have a story that's actually going to help people and help people understand what specifically you do without trying to sell all the time, because I'm not selling to any of you here. You're reading exactly what I'm doing and I'm not selling you on it. But if you're a client who's in this same situation, you've lived in your house for 43 years, you want to sell as is, you're exhausted. You're, you're going to, you're going to buy into this. You're going to read more and you're going to want to know how did this happen? $200,000. That is a crazy number. I'm going to tell you guys, that was insane. I was like, it was that, that beat my expectations. When I convinced them to take their house off the market and let me do what I do my way, I did not, not, I had no idea that we would get them $200,000 more than what they were originally getting. More than 200, actually. It was like 220, I think. I had no clue. I surprised myself. I was like, oh my God. So like, this is the power of a customer story. The other cool thing about this is if you look at a story like this, we had this posted. I think we took the, this screenshot like the day after we posted it. So this is a pretty, a pretty powerful, a pretty powerful testament as to why it's important. Because even though we had it only posted for a day, 378 people watched this, right? We had two people actually save this. Two people actually saved this. So if it was, I don't know if it was a person who's interested in what I do, or if it was someone who liked the video or someone who liked the content, I don't know, but that's the power of telling a story. People are actually, they're going to come back to it because now that they saved it, what's going to happen with Instagram? Instagram's going to be like, oh, cool. Someone likes her content. Let's show them more, right? And that's what, that's the whole reason we're here, right? We're here to get more content. We're here to get, um, we're here to get uh, more people buying into what we actually sell, right? Um, I want to show you another example of a customer story. This one here. Uh, Does this one have sound? Hold on. Oh, shoot. It does. I thought. Anyway, you can't. How come you can't hear it? Oh, here it is. That's why. That's exactly the reason. (laughs) Welcome home. Yeah. How are you guys? Very good. Very good. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate you guys very much. I want to record. Hey, here's an example of a customer telling their own story. Right. And I, the video testimonials are cool. Like I like to like, get video interviews of clients, but I don't watch them from other people. I don't, I don't want to watch someone else tell their story. I like to see the emotion because right now, like, look how excited they are. Right. They're so excited. You can hear the excitement in my voice. You can hear the excitement in my lender's voice. They're so excited. Right. Here's their testimonial. He told this. I can't stress enough how satisfying it was to work with Lene and her team. It's been a pleasure. And I would definitely recommend them, them to those thinking about purchasing or selling their home. Okay. Here's the story. First call I got from Jason was, I keep seeing you on Facebook. And I figured it was a sign. There's a reason I said, I keep seeing you on Facebook because I get a lot of business from Facebook. Get a lot. 
Facebook and Instagram. So this is a legitimate person that literally saw my ads on Facebook and called me because he kept seeing me. So after meeting Jason for the first time, I learned he and his family of four were rapidly growing out of their home. So I'm talking to the buyer, right? Here's the person I want. You're growing out of your home. Right, there you go, Carol. That's your client. Their living situation was due for an upgrade. The moment we went, from the moment we met, we, we knew this was going to be a great partnership. They had a lot of fears and doubts. Here's the actual fears and doubts. I'm speaking directly to the emotion of the client, right? Buying a home can be intimidating. It's completely normal to have fears and doubts along the way. And that is exactly why we have the dream method. It worked. Okay. Customer story. I'll show you one of the, another customer story here. Um, this is the customer story of uh, my client actually telling telling it herself. I actually have a video of her too. I'll probably read you that in another way. Um, but this is my actual client telling the story herself. She found me through an internet search. Yeah, she was a Google pay-per-click client. Literally, Google pay-per-click and we just connected right away. I started thinking I wanted an investment property in Tacoma. Okay, so she, here's the location. Here's what she's looking for. And here's what she actually found. The other thing that's great about this is that uh, she's speaking directly to my client, right? Directly. Because what I say in the beginning, my client is very busy. They have an unpredictable, super busy schedule and they don't there's, they don't have a lot of time. So she's speaking. My, cl- my customer is telling other customers just like her, her story. So this is the power of stories. That is a customer story. So I encourage you, When you're going out and you're getting um, testimonials from your clients, how can you tell it in the form of a story? We have a running document in our Google Drive where I'm always writing the customer story every single time. I I started it just this year because I was like, man, all these things, all these things. Um, And Michelle says, do I prompt them to give them info? Yeah, we do have a... uh, We do have a... uh, um, an email template, but I'm going to tell you the best way to get reviews from my clients. The best way to get them to tell a story is I in conversation, in, in conversation. And uh, sometimes it's in text message because most of my clients, we communicate via text, right? And I'll, one of uh, the thing, I learned this trick uh, about a year and a half ago. And it's like, the, it's way better reviews than the people I get to just write me a review. They're telling me a story. They're telling me, Linnea, I can't believe this was so easy. I can't believe that like this all happened. You guys are so smooth. I just really liked working with you. And I'm like, oh my gosh, would you do me a favor? And they say, yeah. I'm like, I just put it in a text message. Would you copy and paste this? I copy all the pieces of the what they just what they just texted me, by the way. I copy and paste it. Say, would you pay, would you paste this right here? Paste it, text send into this link right here. Send. And then from their phone, all they have to do is hold it down, copy, click and paste. Super easy. And then I'm going to tell you the other thing about uh, getting video testimonials from clients. And what I've, what I've discovered is the easiest is when you don't tell them that you're going to film it. All of my clients, when we onboard them, buyers and sellers, they know that they are going to at some point have candid pictures or candid video taken of them. And they sign an agreement that it is okay. Because the reality is that story, that that video from Jason, like that that would have been uh, that would have been so rigid if I would have said, "Okay, record." It's weird. Like even we, even me, when someone tells me that I have to record video, I mean, I guess now I'm a little bit better at it. But when you're first getting used to being on camera, or if you're not used to being on camera at all, and someone says, "Okay, time to record," like the other day, I had Ryan. Ryan's just starting with me. He started on Thursday or Wednesday, whatever day this week. But the other day, I was like, "Just so you know, I'm gonna you're gonna have to film some content." He was like, "Okay," so I made him record as I was going to hand over keys to someone, and my client was like, "Are we recording right now?" I was like, "Yep." Yeah. He's like, "Cool." <laughs> so they just kept talking. They just kept talking. So like, I, you just need to have them tell the story. Don't write a review. Don't have them do a testimonial. Have them tell the story. Tell me about like, when did you, like, what did you love about, what did you love about working with us? Tell me like where you were when you started in this process. The customer stories are the best. Judith's asking, where do they paste it to? Google review? Yeah, wherever you want to get your reviews. Google, Facebook, Zillow, Realtor.com, Rate My Agent. Um, I don't know. There's like 5,000 other places you can get book reviews. But what I do um, is I always, I always, wherever they paste it, I put that into a Google Doc. So we have a, run, a long form uh, a running Google Doc that has all of our testimonials in it. So that way, if I'm like, oh, shoot, I want to tell a customer story. I've already got the customer story there. I just have to go and make, make this, like actually tell the story on the 
caption. Make sense? So how, how many of you find this customer story to be helpful? How many of you are excited about telling a customer story versus saying just sold? I'm going to challenge every one of you. I have all of your names right here. I see you all. If I see a post from you in the next 30 days that says just sold, I am going to call you out. Because just sold, that is your job. I'm going to remind you, that is how you make money by selling houses. Who cares that you just sold? No one cares. I mean, I do. I'm, happy. I'm always happy. Like, when I'm, like preface that, I am happy. But the people that actually matter, the reason why you want to share that just sold is because those people don't care that you just sold. Because here's what happens. Just sold, just sold, just sold, just sold, just sold, just sold. Oh, you're too busy. Too busy. Can't help you. I'm too busy selling houses over here. Way too busy, right? You will never see a just sold from me. I mean, you might see me talk about how we sold it in the story, but you're never going to see just sold. And honestly, right now, I'm going back and forth in my mind about whether or not I even want to put just listed on my post because I'm like, just listed, who cares? It's a property tour, right? It's a property tour. Let me tell you the story of this house. Like just listed again, too many just listed. Are you too busy? Okay. So I don't want to see any of you. I have, I have your names, all of your names. No, just sold. I'm serious. The challenge yourself, challenge yourself, because when you can actually start thinking of it, of from like telling the story of the client's journey and telling the story of what you actually do and have and helping other people get connected to that story, it's super powerful. Like we had um, through Instagram, I had one person that has actually been in my network for a long time. Um, I have never seen her like any of my posts. I've never seen her look at any of my stories. Maybe she has. I don't know. But she sent me a message on Instagram. Hey, Linnea, my husband and I are thinking that we want to upgrade our house. And, you know, we know that the time might not be right now. We're not quite ready. But, you know, what do you think of this idea? Well, you better believe that that came from telling stories. That didn't come from me posting just listed or just sold. Right? That didn't come from me just posting about, you know, about being behind the scenes all the time. That stuff's important. but like. You guys, it's boring. Go look, go scroll, scroll Instagram and just search real estate agent and just look at how many people just have pictures of houses. Boring, boring. Yeah, I love a pretty house just like you do, but I can go to a website and look at houses all day long. In fact, I saw one in Shelton yesterday. Oh my gosh, I kind of want to go see it. Ooh, six and a half million dollars. It's beautiful, beautiful house. Sorry, sorry, fact. I love beautiful houses. I love them, but I don't want to see them on Instagram. When I go to Instagram, like I want to be entertained. That's my like, that's my unplugging time, right? Like I want to, I want to be entertained. I want to like learn something. I want to be inspired. I don't want to go and just like read like, okay, woohoo. I get inspired by people's success, like awards. I get inspired by as long as this company with the story about how you got there. Okay. So it's never just a quick, quick, like, here you go. This is what I did. I'm amazing. Jean. Hey, I was trying to find out, on your dream method, do you have one separate for the sellers and the buyers or are you just using just one method? Because I noticed that you had um, one for the sellers and then you went a different direction for the buyers or, or is it the same? I have a dream method and then I have uh, some other um, accessories accessory marketing materials that go into the tie into the dream method. If you are on the buy, buy side, I have a dream buy, a dream buyer's guide. If you're on the sell side, I have, sell side, I have a dream seller's guide. I have a dream marketing plan, a dream staging plan, and a dream listing plan. So I have the dream method and now I have everything that kind of like ties into that. But the dream method is a, that's basically the lead magnet. That's the guide. The great question. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, I want to see. I think it was the last of my my pieces here on this slide. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's it. So next week, next week, I want to talk to you about the brand story. The brand story is going to be really, really important. Branding goes beyond your color, goes beyond your logo. This is about your brand, and we're going to go really deep into it next week. Well, as deep as we can in thirty minutes. Um, but I'm going to challenge you this week. Like even if you don't have any homes that you've just closed or anything, I challenge you to find a customer and write a story about them. 
I challenge you because I'm going to tell you once you start doing it, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Like I have one right now. I'm like writing up the story. I'm like, oh my God, this is going to make great content that like, like the, 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 the journey that he's going through that we've been going through for the last four and a half months to try to sell his house is like no other journey I've ever been on with a client. None. There's a lot of, a lot of things that are like, oh my gosh, who would want to sell their house with all this stuff that he has to go through? Right. And I cannot wait to tell his story. I'm like, I'm already writing it. Like, just because it's so exciting to be like, oh my gosh, look what he's doing right now. I'm genuinely excited for him. Genuinely excited to be like, oh my gosh, look what's happening. He's getting this new job in Atlanta. He's going to, he's relocating from here to there. We've been trying to sell his house for the last four and a half months. All these things, all these things that have, people have a lot of fears about. Out. What if my what if a buyer fails inspection? Like all these things that this person is having fears about. Okay, that is going to make a powerful story, and it's going to connect with so many people. So, find your last client, find your current client, and write their story, and then ask them to tell you to write their story. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, I will see you next week, and we will talk about the brand story. If you'd like more information or to get connected to the Agent Power Huddle, join our free Facebook group. This call was designed for the agents in our eXp organization, but open to any agent from any brokerage. If you're a guest and you're interested in learning more about eXp or our specific resources within the Agent Collective, reach out to the person who invited you to this call to get more info. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.